Paris Denard is a Donald Trump supporter. Um, he's been on TV literally over 100 times. And um, uh, guess what, it's shocking. Turns out he thinks Donald Trump is right every time. Uh, and I got no use for him, I got no love for him. Uh, and that's very important to this story, because at the end, I'm going to agree with him on something that is a little disturbing. Uh, first, you will hear other disturbing things. So um, who is he, just if you don't know him? And, and there's no reason why you would have known him before this, but he's actually been around in Republican politics a long time. And it's actually kind of a sad story about how uh, Republicans find some minorities and basically pay them their whole lives to tell us how bad other minorities are. So uh, he actually gave a speech at the RNC when he was a teenager. And Dick Cheney was in the audience, applauded, hey, way to go. And so what did he do? Uh, he eventually started working for the Bush White House. And there he was working as their advanced team and then had been named to the White House outreach director to the black community. So here's look, here's a black Republican who thinks Republicans are awesome. Come on, blacks, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, okay, that's fine. And uh, then he went on to support Donald Trump enthusiastically during the campaign, all over television, etc. And one of the things that, of course, uh, he uh, defended Donald Trump on was his record on rolling back race admission policies. So. You don't wanna send a white guy out there to say how bad affirmative action is, so you send Paris Denard out there. And he goes, "Oh yeah, 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 it's really bad, really bad. We, we shouldn't be giving that to minorities. Uh, and, and he was rewarded in December when he was appointed to the Commission on White House Fellowships. And this is how it works. Now, by the way, let's just note for the record, uh, progressives have an incredibly difficult time getting on cable news. Uh, if you're a Bernie Sanders supporter, not if you're a Hillary Clinton supporter, I mean, then no, you're all over cable news, there's no end to it, right? But if you support the Sanders wing, good luck to you, brother. But a guy like Paris Denard, to do those talking points for the Republicans, will be invited back on hundreds of times. So as you can tell, I got no interest in Paris Denard. I'm opposed to him enthusiastically and fervently. Okay, so why is he in the news today? Well, for a couple of reasons. A couple of days ago, we showed you on the show, Blow up he had with Phil Mudd, who is a former FBI and CIA employee. So on Monday, as the Washington Post explains, Denard drew praise from Trump for a heated exchange on CNN with Philip Mudd, a former counterterrorism official with the CIA and the FBI. Mudd grew visibly angry during the exchange when Denard accused officials such as him and former CIA director John Brennan of profiting from their security clearances after leaving government. And there, uh, we explain that while we don't agree with Denard on anything else, there is some truth that people leave government with a security clearance. And Philip Mudd said, hey, I don't get paid by the government anymore. That's true, but that gives them clout, and then they are hired by other private companies because of that clout. So they do profit from it. And in fact, when John Brennan's security clearance was taken away, which was, by the way, a terrible thing that Donald Trump did, but when he took it away, all of a sudden, some of the other people got scared. Not Philip Mudd to give him credit for being strong and brave on that issue, but guys like James Clapper all of a sudden were like, well, I think it's kind of Brennan's fault. Oh, the cowardice is unbelievable. But do they profit generally by having that status? Yes, they do. Now, all of a sudden, he's back in the news, Paris and artist. Why? Because the Washington Post just somehow happened to land a story about something really, really damaging in his past. So turns out he was working at Arizona State, and um, this is what happened. Pick it up with the Washington Post. An internal investigation by the university concluded that Paris Denard, a surrogate during the campaign and now a member of the President's Commission on White House Fellowships, told a recent college graduate who worked for him that he wanted to have sex with her. He quote, pretended to unzip his pants in her presence, tried to get her to sit on his lap, and made masturbatory gestures, according to the university report obtained by the Washington Post. Now that is all uh, crazy, terrible, unacceptable, and he was fired. But look, I wanna give you more context, and none of it is good. Uh, uh, before I tell you why on God's green earth, uh, I, I might in any way uh, understand a point that this guy is making. So we'll get to that at the end. First, more terrible stuff. Denard also admitted touching the first woman's neck with his tongue. Ugh. 
According to the report, in that instance, Denard came up behind employee one during another McCain Institute event, that's where he was working, and whispered in her ear that he wanted to F her. Okay. Uh, now, if all that wasn't bad enough, um, this is the part that I thought was the worst. So, I mean, I don't know how much worse it can get than, you know, the whole thing with the sit on my lap and the neck on the tongue, but okay. Uh, but uh, one of the women said, look, they said, look, I. Apparently, they're unbelievably fair people, and they said, I'm not sure we want him to get fired. But they went on to say, we all know what it's like to be on Denard's bad side. He will make your life miserable. What if he comes back to the office? What if he comes to an event? Does he know where I live? Oh, He's got to go. No, no, no. Women at the office are afraid that he'll come to their house. So Arizona State did the right thing. They fired him, okay? And uh, did he acknowledge these things actually happened? Well, I'll give you context on that too. He said he had not seen the full report and was led to believe it was sealed and proprietary. <laughs> he did it. Okay, when you say like, well, I didn't see the whole thing, but hey, that was supposed to be secret. Well, okay, then you knew, and, and as the report indicates, they did talk to him, he did participate. Uh, he went on to say, I cannot comment on uh, items I have never seen regarding allegations I still believe to be false. Mm, not buying it. So, what's the only part that I agree with him on? He said at the end, this is sadly another politically motivated attempt to besmirch my character and shame me into silence for my support of President Trump and the GOP. Now, look, I don't know if it's to quiet him on his support of Donald Trump. But here is a guy who went after someone who worked in the intelligence community on national television and arguably embarrassed them. And a lot of people in the establishment in Washington make money off of that racket of, hey, I used to work in the government. Now, then they go and be, uh, become lobbyists, lawyers, consultants, employees, uh, on and on it goes for all these corporations that then benefit from the government. A guy points it on, out on TV, a guy I don't agree with at all. And all of a sudden, a couple of days later, hey, they found an old story about how he did sexual harassment and got fired. Do you think that's a coincidence? I got news for you, and this is what the reporters never tell you, what they never tell you on television. It is not a coincidence. So it's called oppo research. It's normally done in political campaigns. You do opposition research against the other person, and all of a sudden, all sorts of bad stories start coming out about him. Just in time for the campaign. What a lucky break that was. And oftentimes, these are fed to the reporters. Now. It doesn't mean that it's not that it's particularly nefarious, and it definitely doesn't mean they made it up. It appears to be very, very true. And so, do I shed a tear for Paris Denard overall? No, and he is suspended by CNN as they now begin an investigation of him, since he's a contributor there and appears on their air regularly. Um, so I got again for the 18th time. And not only do I not want to defend him overall, I disagree with him completely, and I think what he did was atrocious. But we have to note for the record why this story comes out at a time that it does. Now, if I were to say it about an ally, a political ally of ours, you might question and go, "Oh, Jenk, you're just covering up for him. As you can tell, I have no interest in covering up for Denard, and I think he's a terrible guy. But understand, and this is part of what we do here. One, we're honest with you, no matter who it is and what the situation is. And number two, we try to give you context for the news. So when a reporter gets a story like this fed to him by God knows who, he doesn't tell you, Oh, by the way, this guy who's friends with Philip Mudd gave me this information. I looked it up, it turns out it's true, that's why I wrote it, ha <laughs> ha, they buried him. He doesn't give you that context, that's our job. He might have deserved it, but he did get buried, and he very likely got buried because of what he said about Philip Mudd. Like this video? That's great, and you never have to miss another episode of TYT by hitting the subscribe button below and ring the bell to get notified whenever we publish a new video.